Right guys, welcome back to A-Level Psychology. This is memory lesson 1.3 and it's going to be covering research into the duration of memory. It is also the third and final lesson on the nature of memory with the first lesson being research into coding and the second lesson being research into capacity. If you missed either of those, the links will be appearing at the top of your screen now and you'll also be able to access them at the end of this video as well. So, duration refers to the amount of time that information can be held for in memory. And there are two research studies that you need for this particular topic. You've got research by Peterson and Peterson from 1959 that looked at the duration of short-term memory. And you have research by Barak et al. from 1975 who looked at the duration of long-term memory. So, we're going to start with Peterson and Peterson. And they conducted research using nonsense trigrams. Now a nonsense trigram is what you can see on the right of the screen there. It's three random letters that have no known abbreviation, acronym, anything like that. And every participant in their study was given one of these to remember together with a three digit number. The participants were then asked to recall the trigram after a certain retention interval. And those retention intervals ranged from three seconds all the way up to 18 seconds. And to make sure that the participants weren't rehearsing the trigram during these intervals, they were asked to count backwards from the three-digit number that they'd been given. So participants, for example, might have been given GHZ 303, and then for the next six seconds, let's say, they would have to count backwards 303, 302, 301, and so on and so on. The idea being that counting backwards for a certain amount of time would stop them rehearsing the nonsense trigram and would allow them to measure the duration of memory without anything else getting in the way. Now what they found was that after three seconds, 80% of their participants were able to recall their trigram correctly. However, that number went down and after 18 seconds, fewer than 10% were able to recall their trigram correctly. So effectively, recall got progressively worse as the delay grew longer. And the conclusion from that is that if you were to follow the line on the graph all the way until it hit zero, you'd probably be somewhere around the 30 second mark. So short term memory, according to Peterson and Peterson, has a duration of somewhere between 18 and 30 seconds. OK, nice, simple study with a nice, simple conclusion. Now, moving on to long-term memory, the duration of long-term memory was studied by Barak et al. in 1975, and he used 392 17 to 74-year-olds, and he tested their long-term memory using old yearbook photos, high school yearbook photos, examples of which you can see on the screen now. Now, the study consisted of two tasks. One was a photo recognition task, and one was a free recall task. The photo recognition task was quite simple. Barak provided his participants with a range of photos, some of which had been taken from their own high school yearbook, and participants were asked to pick out people they'd gone to school with. However, in the free recall task, they didn't have the pictures to help them, they just had to name people from their graduating class. Okay, so they just had to try and remember the people that they went to school with. The findings show that in the photo recognition task, people were 90% accurate if they graduated in the last 15 years. And that number dropped slightly, but not massively, to 70% if they'd graduated within the last 48 years. Which shows that actually long-term memory can last a very, very, very long time. In the free recall task, the numbers were a little bit lower. There was 60% accuracy if they graduated within 15 years and that dropped to 30% if they graduated within the last 48 years. Now, even though those numbers are a little bit lower, it does still tell us one thing, and that is that long-term memory can potentially last for years, if not a lifetime, okay? Because those numbers are still very high, particularly in the photo recognition task. So, as this is the third and final video, I'll give you a quick summary of everything that the three videos have covered in terms of coding capacity and duration. So here it is. Coding 
is acoustic in short-term memory and semantic in long-term memory, according to Baddeley 1966. That was video one. Capacity is limited in short-term memory to seven plus or minus two chunks. That is the magical number as proposed by Miller. And then you had some research by Jacobs as well, who said about digit spans and how it was 9.34 digits. That was lesson two. And then you got duration, which was this video, limited for short-term memory to about 20 to 30 seconds or 18 to 30 seconds. However, in long-term memory, it can last for years, if not a lifetime, according to Barak from 1975. The only one that I didn't speak about specifically for any longer than about 30 seconds was the capacity of long-term memory, and that is simply because it is unlimited. No research is needed, nothing more needs to be said, as long as you can remember, capacity of long-term memory is potentially unlimited. Right, let's move on to a couple of evaluation points and exam questions, and then that will be the end of the video. So, as with the other two videos, I've got two evaluation points for you, which will be plenty to get you through any exam question on this specific topic. We're going to start off with a strength of Barrick study, and that is that it has high external validity. The reason it has high external validity is because the researchers used meaningful memories, as in people's names and people's faces, in order to test the duration of long-term memory. Other research that's been conducted since then have not had as good results because they were all using meaningless pictures, and so the recall rates were lower. And that suggests that Barrick's findings reflect a real estimate of the duration of long-term memory because they weren't using artificial materials or stimuli, they were using real life memories, real meaningful materials, which give us a nice accurate representation of what the duration of long term memory is like in the real world. So high external validity in Barrick's study. However, Peterson's study, on the other hand, is the exact opposite. It has low external validity, because they use artificial stimuli to measure the duration of short-term memory. Trigrams do not reflect most everyday memory activities where we're trying to remember something that means something to us. Yes, granted, sometimes we do have to try and remember irrelevant information, things like postcodes and phone numbers and all of that, but even those have a little bit of meaning to us because they're related to perhaps where we live or to our own phone numbers or phone numbers of the people that we care for. So they even have a little bit of meaning, whereas the nonsense trigrams had absolutely no meaning whatsoever. So that means that it lacks external validity because it doesn't generalize to how we use memory in the real world. Okay, so just to finish off then, I have a couple of exam questions for you that could come up if you look at a past paper or do some exam practice um, in the near future. So, questions about research into duration are fairly standard. They are bread and butter questions, just like they would be in coding or capacity. So this one specifically describe one way in which psychologists have investigated the duration of short-term memory. It seems like a fairly straightforward question, and it is, but you just have to make sure that you read the question carefully. It says, describe one way in which psychologists have investigated. That means that you don't need to talk about the findings. You just have to say what was done. And it even gives you a little bit more information as well, because it says you should include details of the stimulus used, what the participants were asked to do, and how the duration was measured. But there's no talk about findings. Okay, You're not going to lose marks if you talk about findings, but equally you're going to waste time because technically there are no marks to be gained. Okay, So don't waste your time with the findings. You're going to get full marks if you just do what the question asks. But you have to make sure that you read the question properly before you start writing. And then I've just got a couple of generic ones to finish you off. Um, so I said at the beginning of this series when we were looking at coding that actually all of these videos link into the multi-store model of memory. So you can get some questions that refer to the multi-store model, but actually they're talking about the nature of memory. So 
question one here, for example, what has psychological research shown about short-term memory according to the multi-store model? Well, they're throwing you off a little bit by talking about the multi-store model. You can talk about coding capacity or duration. Anything that I've talked about in the last three videos, you can talk about there. Okay, you can talk about more than one thing if you want, but chances are that's only going to be perhaps a three or a four mark question. So choose wisely what you talk about. Don't overdo it. Just give a good account of what we've talked about in these videos. Also, read the question, what has research shown? It's not said, how was the research done? So we need to know what the capacity is or what the duration is or what how it codes, not how the research was done that actually came to those conclusions, okay? And then the second question is very similar. Explain the findings of one or more studies that demonstrate that short-term memory and long-term memory are different. So again, you're not being asked to outline a study, you're being asked to show the findings, right? So you can really do two things here. You can either use Baddeley's study from 1966 and say, the findings are this, and this shows that long-term memory codes semantically and short-term memory codes acoustically. So we are demonstrating a difference between the two. Or you can use Peterson and Peterson and Barrick. Again, show what they found and use those findings to say long-term memory potentially can last for years, if not a lifetime, where a short-term memory is limited to 18 to 30 seconds but don't waste time on outlining the entire studies because that's not what the question wants you to do. Some questions might ask you to do that, but it will be very clear because it will say, outline research into X, Y, Z, or something along those lines, okay? So that is the end of the three video series. I hope they've all made sense. I hope duration has made sense. If you've got any questions, please put them in the comment section below and I will get back to you ASAP. I hope it's been useful. You'll see part one and part two on the screen now, so you can go ahead and check those out if you haven't done so already. Thank you very much for listening. I hope it's been useful and I'll see you in the next one.